if you have been in a household which does puja at the end of the puja you always ask god or even at a wedding when you go or when you are sitting with a priest the normal uh, blessing right at the at the wedding or any place is dhanam that is wealth dhanyam which is food pashum which is cattle bahuputra labham many kids and uh, shata samvatsaram which is uh, lived till the age of 100 this is a normal indian uh, sanskrit blessing and to think that this is amazing it is fairly obvious it comes from the suktam which is part of the vedas don't get into too much of detail which means it's a few thousand years old and can you imagine even today when you sit with somebody and does you do goal sitting this is exactly what they are asking they are asking for wealth they are asking for a uh, family which means to provide for the family they are asking for food you are asking for a roof and uh, when you say cattle you largely look at it as a source of income because cattle used to be the source of income source of prosperity uh, people were judged by the number of cattle he had he is saying iske paas itna gai hai itna bail hai itne ghode hain itna haathi hai for the very rich they had uh, elephants and uh, obviously the king had the maximum number of elephants and this is how we were judged bahuputra labham is in uh, you can imagine the uh, in 1947 the average age at which indians used to die was 28 right so if it is going to be so low you better have enough children so some child of yours will be there to look after the family look after the family wealth create the family name to look after the agriculture you needed you needed one child for the agriculture one child for the dairy right you needed somebody for all that so therefore a bahuputra labham now you shift it to the current uh, thing what do you want of course you want uh, wealth now when you say you want wealth you also realize that you want responsible wealth you don't want irresponsible wealth now you go to the indian uh, wedding in the indian wedding the uh, guy holds the girl's hand and they do uh, they do seven uh, vows and in those the girl keeps asking the guy i want this and the guy keeps saying i will get you within the laws of dharma right so within the laws of dharma you need to get whatever you want all whether you want children whether you want wealth whether you want a house all that have to be within the laws of dharma you also say you also realize that hindu philosophy was never against creating wealth right but it was always wealth for a cause so unlike the invading guys who built muslims for their uh, wives or others or for themselves uh, the king hindu kings built temples which means it was more of public wealth rather than private wealth private wealth was there it is not that the kings lived very badly but you don't hear stories of their living you hear stories of the temples that they built look at the padmanabha swami temple the king came with the sword comes with the sword today and seeks god's blessing saying i am your agent that is exactly the trusteeship of wealth if you realize what gandhi ji spoke about was trusteeship of wealth so when you talk of wealth of course you need wealth but you realize that beyond a particular point you are only a trustee you are holding it for your children and for your children's children or for the society in uh, at the end because at some stage it will happen that you don't have progeny or it is your employees who are going to run your business which happens to many businesses so yes dhanam meant that you need that dhanyam meant food you can now say good quality um, food which is say organic well grown well maintained you buy it uh, you bring it home you wash it you clean it you eat it properly and you eat a healthy food so dhanam meant wealth and dhanyam meant uh, dhanyam meant means grains but you translate it to meaning good quality food for today and that is again something which we are praying for that we get good quality food dhanam dhanam dhanyam pashum pashum is cattle when you say cattle largely you mean a source of uh, income dhanyam and pashum were largely sources of income so you always had cows and i know people who had cows and would love the cows they would cry if something happened to the cow 
and uh, they would go hug the cow the cow's milk was used in the house for doing puja the cow was never milked fully the calf had to first have its fill and that is how milk was defined right so milk which was uh, defined as uh, sattvic milk meant got from a cow after the calf has been satisfied and obviously this was not uh, milked with using a machine so you knew that the cow would be in pain and in a family i mean my grandfather my mother's grandfather's family had five cows and three four people obviously the cows were not milked right they definitely not milked fully you need a little bit of milk you took that and left you just left the balance right that is how it was milked so that is what the relationship with the pashum was so dhanam dhanyam pashum bahu putra labam you needed many children because you do not know how many would survive so you hear stories of she had eight kids she had seven kids and they will also tell you you know she lost six kids to in, in childhood they were not born they were still born she had an abortion or kids died young so when you have so much of worry that some of them may not survive some of them may not live beyond the age of 3 some may not live beyond the age of 5 they were worried that somebody had to look after them in their old age now you can't go back and laugh at a concept which is 70 80 years old right even 40 years back or 30 years back people expected even today there are families where they the parents expect the kid saying i paid for his education he has to look after me right there are some people who say it's not necessary but that is exactly how bahuputra bahuputra means you were never satisfied with one kid because you do not know you did not know because of childhood mortality how many children would survive so bahuputra labam and then you also wanted to live till the age of 100 right so just imagine somebody created this prayer a few thousand years ago and even today it is relevant except that you want to change a little bit of uh, what is dhanam what is dhanyam what is you you talk of uh, esg in your dhanam saying i only want company i will not buy an itc which is spreading cancer now obviously when i say that and i put a constraint on my portfolio my returns go down but that's okay i live with lesser returns but i will not buy a monsanto chemical i will not buy a uh, nitc right i can have those views and i have to compromise on the return that's fine but that that gives me peace of mind so your dhanyam uh, sorry your dhanam has to have those features which gives you peace of mind so a good portfolio is one which lets you sleep at night without worrying what will happen market goes up market goes down if you are worried about what happens to your equity portfolio when the market goes up or market down it means you have too much money in equity or you do not have enough understanding of equity one of the two so so look at your portfolio if you think you have too much of equity get more into debt and uh, capital preservation is also important so get into cash and uh, uh, debt instruments they are also useful they are very useful when the market goes down i have a disproportionately high amount of cash in my hand always i would have at least say 5 6 years expenses in my savings bank account which sounds very bad but that gives me comfort that i know that if the market goes through a bad phase i can still hold on so your dha, your dhanam should be nicely balanced ESG should be taken care of. You should have growth. You should have liquidity, and you should give you peace of mind. What I think is not important. What you think is important in your portfolio, right? So don't let your IFA decide your asset allocation. You decide your asset allocation. Bahu putra labam we have done, and so so that's it. So this same Ashirvadam, which uh, which is old. maybe few thousand years old 1500 4000 years as old as the vedas and uh, what, what all let me just repeat you started with dhanam dhanyam bahuputra labam right so shatashavastam and dirgam ayushu which means you live long it doesn't say anything about health but i guess uh, when you say dirga ayush you say that can happen only if you have good health so today maybe we should include that also saying dirga ayush includes a long happy healthy life so mental happiness physical happiness right look after all that and that's it so that is my ashirvadam to you 
have your uh, dhanam, dhanyam, pashum, bahuputra, labam and live till the age of 100 or 200, whatever you want to live. 